<laughs> Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous summer evening here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is a Thursday night, July 27th. It is 75 degrees. 75 degrees here at Bugs in a Jar Farm on this glorious summer evening and we got some ribs on the grill we have our fellow earthlings on the grill and so while they are cooking you know oh before i get into my rant we, we need just to we just need to send out a big uh a big round of applause to this uh the, the newest doomer well he's maybe not the newest doomer at this point but but uh, the, the the fairly new face in the Doomosphere, my good friend Elliot Jacobson. This dude came out of nowhere a couple of years ago. Came out of nowhere. Uh, all of us Doomers sitting around here for how many years talking about the collapse of a planet uh, being completely ignored by the mainstream media. And uh, my good friend, Elliot Jacobson, just appeared out of nowhere. And uh, I guess for good reason, uh, he has actually become, uh, he, he has become, or he's becoming, I would say he has become, that this fellow, that Elliot has become the darling of the mainstream media, their go-to doomer, uh, that that Elliot Jacobson can get away w w with with saying shit on the mainstream media that I could never get away with saying. And, and good for you, brother. So uh, I really wanted to post Elliot's uh, interview with CNN. I guess he was on BBC back in December. I know he was on Soft White Underbelly because I was sitting right next to him. Uh, and and then he was on BBC. I think he might have been quoted in the Washington Post a few weeks ago. And so he has gotten the attention of the mainstream media. And uh, so CNN actually put this man up for five minutes. He got almost five minutes to look right at that camera and, and say, uh, with with no trace of hopium, uh, that we're doomed. And, and hell yeah. Uh, it, you know, it kind of reminded me out of that, that scene out of Don't Look Up, you know, where... Uh, <clears throat> The, the the main character, uh, you know, what was Leonardo DiCaprio's character, uh, you know, going in there and spelling out the fact that the planet is doomed to the mainstream media and, and how the interviewers just started, you know, shoveling hopium on top of his comment. But I'm proud to say that, uh, the, you know, to CNN's credit, that uh, Elliot Jacobson looked right in that camera and said, we are doomed. And the uh, th th this was my only problem. Uh, and I told Elliot this, and I don't mind sharing this. A and so the CNN interviewer, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name. I, I mean, gave Elliot the greatest, you know, if this was Abbott and Costello, what do you call that line where the straight man, uh, you know, basically the... the interviewer was asking uh, if the sixth great mass extinction uh, was going to include humans. And, and Elliot, I love you, brother, but uh, damn it, you missed, uh, uh, you, you missed that golden opportunity. I think Elliot's answer to was it going to include humans, not necessarily. So I would have changed not necessarily to no shit Sherlock uh, that it's obviously going to include humans. Uh, so other than that small criticism, uh, good for you, Elliot, and, and good for CNN for uh, running the segment. Straight ahead.
we're doomed. What did they call Elliot? Elliot was called an expert. Uh, <laughs> an expert. Uh, and he is an expert. Uh, Elliot Jacobson is an expert, Doomer, that we are doomed. Uh, and there's no way we're getting out of this. And, and put it out there on CNN. So I'm waiting for Elliot Jacobson's uh, next interview on Fox News. We will see how that one goes. But anyway, uh, good for you, brother. And uh, But that's not what I'm here to rant about. I just wanted to make sure we uh, we all send uh, Elliot Jacobson uh, a high five for actually uh, bringing the Doomers uh, viewpoint taken seriously. So now what we're, we're going to switch gears here. And we're going to talk about the latest reason that clueless morons are going to use to shovel more, uh, and, and, and in this case, well-deserved uh, dirt on doomers. And that is this story that came out recently. Where did it originally come out last week? Uh, I've barely mentioned it because I, I don't, I, I don't want to be lumped into, uh, the clueless moron doomers. Where did this come out? What, what, uh, the journal Nature, uh, we're, we're going, uh, okay, let, let me just read. This is the Telegraph. You know, the Telegraph is England's version of Fox News. And I am agreeing 100% with England's version of Fox News from the Telegraph. Don't heed warnings of day after tomorrow ocean collapse, says Met Office. Warnings about the imminent collapse of an ocean system, you know, meaning the AMOC. Imagine in the film, The Day After Tomorrow, should not cause despair, climate scientists have said. A, a paper published in the journal Nature this week suggested that the Atlantic meridional overturning circulation, otherwise known as the AMOC, was likely to collapse by 2057 and possibly as early as 2025, but its methods have been criticized as oversimplistic, and, and this is the most important part from Doomer's uh, perspective, and its conclusions over-dramatized, leading to concern they could undermine the public perception of climate science. Uh, which is exactly uh, the, the danger of this fear-mongering, unadulterated horseshit. And, and more than uh, undermining the public perception of climate science, I would take that a step forward, it, it, it is about the public perception of doomers. Uh, that, that any doomer, and possibly including a gentleman listening to this rant right now, uh, coming out here, uh, talking about how the damn AMOC is going to collapse and, and all of this uh, unadulterated, fear-mongering, doomer horseshit. It's the kind of crap that gives doomers a bad name. It's, uh, it's not quite in the league of uh, humans being extinct by the year 2026, uh, somewhere between 2026 and 2030, but it's a close cousin. You know that this near-term human extinction crap, and we know, and when we know damn well who we're talking about here, uh, that 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 dude has done more to uh, to undermine the message of doomers and to make doomers a laughing stock than any human on the planet. Anybody believe in this crap. Humans are going to be extinct in two years. The, the damn AMOC is going to collapse uh, in two years. All of this crap. 
And, and you wonder why doomers are a laughing stock. And, and, I, and I am serving notice. Uh, I am serving notice right now that Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles in no way, shape, or form is buying this unadulterated horse shit on any level. Okay? So don't come back at me when the damn AMOC uh, has not collapsed uh, by the year 2025 and, and say, okay, Doomer, what happened to your prediction about the AMOC collapsing in the year 2025? It's crap. Uh, back to the uh, England's version of Fox News, and we're going to get into an interview I had with the world's greatest expert on the AMOC, Wally Brecker, here in a minute. Um, the AMOC is a flow across the entire ocean carrying warmer surfer, surface waters towards the UK and Greenland and bringing cooler waters back down south at up to 3,000 meters deep. It is not the same as the Gulf Stream, which is a more stable near-surface current driven largely by winds, blah, blah, blah. It is estimated that the tipping point for collapse would happen in 2057, according with the, uh, to this new study in Nature, with a possible range between 2025 and 2095. Uh, a press release for the study said the collapse could happen, quote, potentially any time from 2025. Now, if the AMOC were to collapse, which it's not going to, it would have severe. It would have severe impacts on the global climate over the course of several years, affecting global precipitation, including possibly weakening the African and Asian monsoons. Blah 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 blah. And anyway, good for the Telegraph. Uh, but who we're going to listen to is uh, my old buddy Wally Brecker. Wallace Brecker um, was this climate scientist. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was the fall of 2018 when I had the honor of interviewing Wallace Brecker. I think Wallace, I think Wally was 88 years old when I interviewed him. Uh, he, he was quite the curmudgeon. And uh, as I recall, about six weeks after I interviewed uh, Wally Brecker, he dropped dead. So I hope that uh, I was not that I did not contribute to the death of uh, Wally Brecker. Wally Brecker is often quoted as the man who invented the term global warming. Now, he denies that. Uh, he does not take credit, uh, although by and large he is known as the man who minimally brought the term global warming to popularity. But one of the things that uh, Wally Brecker spent uh, his lifetime studying was the AMOC. Okay, if anybody on this planet is qualified to talk about the collapse of the AMOC, it would be Wally Brecker. There's this thing in journalism school that we're taught called source credibility, where, you, you, you know, when you're trying to decide who to educate yourself on a subject, you go to the top of the heap, and the top of the heap on the collapse of the AMOC is Wallace Brecker. Now, of course, this interview was five years ago. I would absolutely love to get Wallace Brecker's... I would absolutely love to hear Wally Brecker's uh, critique of this new uh, paper claiming that... Uh, 
the the AMOX even going to collapse in the year 2057 uh, to hear him uh, to hear him go off. But anyway, this is me back when uh, he, you know back when uh, I I was a a journalist five years ago on Collapse Chronicles interviewing Wally Brecker uh, about the AMOC and his opinion of anybody talking about the AMOC collapsing. Take it away, Wally Brecker, and educate us on the collapse of the AMOC. Is that what I heard you say? Well, it's a matter of definition, but it's the deep ocean water as a, in, in its entirety is replaced by new deep water once every 500 years, more or less. And wow. part of that replacement is from the North Atlantic and part of it is from around Antarctica. So yeah, these things move slowly, but <clears throat> as I just mentioned, the change that we're talking about, the changes occurred in less than a decade. This was shocking. Nobody had ever even dreamed that the ocean circulation underwent any changes at all until I pointed out that this was the likely explanation for what we saw in Greenland. And that's been verified over and over again, so there's no doubt that this is happening. What came as a surprise was that it had uh, global consequences. And uh, it turns out it had a big effect on tropical rainfall. And that came as a big surprise. Why would this change in circulation change tropical rainfall? Well, we found something that is very important to global warming, and that is that we think that each time the deep water production was shut down or, or made much less, uh, the Atlantic, northern Atlantic froze over in the winter, in each winter, so that it would have been like the Arctic all the way down to Cornwall in England. And, uh, of course, that would have made um, <clears throat> Norway more like Siberia because no heat would be coming up from the deep ocean and and no and sunlight would be bounced back off of the uh, ice and so we realized that and then it became clear that if you cool one hemisphere with respect to the other the rain belts all shift toward the warm hemisphere so when this happened, all the rain fell, the world's rain belts moved to the south. And this movement was something like five degrees. I mean, it's big yeah. if you look at it. And um, so <clears throat> this is sort of the background. Um, the this reason is why it made such big effects <clears throat> is that the um, northern Atlantic froze over, and this is very important to our future. Um, we, I don't think that the, what we call a conveyor belt, could undergo an abrupt shutdown like it did in the past. And also, if it were to shut down, sea ice wouldn't form. It would be too warm. It's already too warm. It's getting warmer. And the great amplifier, <clears throat> the reason the continents felt this so strongly in, in rainfall and other things, is that there was sea ice in the north. So if this were to happen in the future, it wouldn't be so important. I know this is not what you wanted to hear. No, no, but, no, this is... But, this but, uh, is you know, we got big troubles, don't... I don't want to... I'm, I'm uh, greatly concerned about the fact that we're not doing anything about global warming because we're going to mess up the planet big time. But fortunately, 
in messing it up, we probably won't experience uh, any abrupt changes like we did during the glacial period. And these abrupt changes occurred because we could form ice and, and also store fresh water and release it back into the ocean. Um, so what is going on? See, this, you know, I, I think this, this whole subject is, is so much of what these climate change and global warming deniers use and, and, and laugh at the quote, I'm sure you've heard the term junk science, that how can global warming end, uh, and yeah, how can global warming end up, is, is it global warming or is it a new ice age? And, now, and, and I'm reading even the non-climate deniers, there's still this debate about all of this fresh water pouring in from, uh, f from Greenland, uh, you know, diluting the saltiness, and, and, and some people are claiming that already the warm water from the Gulf Stream is, is not reaching as far. Can you just shed a little, where, where do you weigh in well, in this a, debate? People, there's intense studying going on of the health of the of the what we call the North Atlantic deep water, and there's a, a very uh, there's a set of instruments that stretch all the way from Spain to the Bahamas, and they're you know they have measure certain things in the deep sea. Their conclusion is that the strength of the conveyor circulation is highly variable year to year and that in order to decide whether it's slowing down or speeding up is going to take something like 30 years and they're now 15 years into that 20 and years i don't think the arguments that people made about surface waters i think are are just very weak arguments and basically meaningless as far as you've got to monitor the actual flow, and that's what these people are doing. Yeah. And so it is variable, and it could shut down, but I think that it would shut down slowly, over 100 years or something. The amount of water coming off of Greenland is a piddle. The, um, <clears throat> the people have done a lot of models as to how much fresh water do you have to add to kill a conveyor. And it's about a hundred times more than's coming off of Greenland, so forget it for right now. So you are so you are not part of the chorus that that's claiming the the runoff from Greenland is going to end up with Paris looking like uh, Newfoundland in sometime that's over the next. Total and utter nonsense. Okay, so putting it. Mildly. So you, I, right, I just want, all right, because because there are people I, I know you know well, this uh, more than me making that about argument. All sorts of crazy things, <laughs> and that's not why we're talking right now. Let's yeah. be serious. Yeah. So okay. So all right, I want to make stuff that's pseudoscience. All right. So you are not. I just want to make it clear for the record that that you are not forecasting uh, London being under six feet of ice in the next twenty years. That's not. That's not in, in, in that your forecast. That is forecast. ridiculous, and it's not even worth talking okay, about. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, all right, I'm glad you uh, you were all on the record for that. Well, let's... All right. So that was Wally Brecker uh, five years ago, a few weeks before he died. Uh, he doesn't seem to be that concerned that the collapse of the AMOC is what this planet uh, ought to be concerned about. And I am uh, throwing in with Wally on this one, and, and I'm assuming that Book Hermit is going to join uh, me and, and Wally Brecker on, uh, on uh, worrying about something other than the collapse of the uh, AMOC. But right now... Uh, I'm going to wrap up that one, and hopefully we can move on to something more serious. Because I have some, uh, I have some of my fellow Earthlings on the grill, 
that I am much more concerned about than the collapse of the AMOC on this absolutely gorgeous summer evening at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Bye, guys.